And by doing this, we'll find out that you don't really need to know the difference. Because... Hola! So, a person who learns Portuguese asked me about... Differences between words with similar meanings and when you use that word. If you are studying Portuguese, you probably have a textbook, a course, or something that you can learn with, with explanations, right? Something that explains to you these things. Now, you may get confused and this is normal. So, one thing very simple is, first, learn one of these words. For example, a seguir and Próxima. This can be translated as next and you need to know how to use these two and what's the difference between these two and when we can use it, right? So, this is confu if this is confusing for you, you just need to pick one. Pick one and forget the other one. For example, a seguir. You want to learn a seguir and you know there's another word that is similar. You don't understand really the difference. And you know what? You don't need to. You don't need to stick so much to the, to the rules. What you can do is, you take this asgir, this word, and you learn this word as much as you can. You use a lot of sentences with context, you listen to this word, you read, you really focus on learning a seguir. And you internalize this. You listen a lot, you read a lot, and you focus just in a seguir. A seguir, a seguir, a seguir, e a seguir. And what do you do next? A seguir, <laughs> because next is a seguir. When you feel comfortable, and you know a lot of situations, a lot of sentence, sentences that use a seguir. When you feel comfortable, now you switch. You do the same process, but with próxima. So when you learn these two words that are similar, a seguir and próxima, separately, you are not confused. First you learn one, you get comfortable, you really learn it, and then you move to the other one. What is going to happen is when you want to use the language, when you want to speak Portuguese, and you, you listen a lot, you read a lot, when, you, when it's time to actually uh, use the language, it will come naturally. You don't need to think about it. I notice with a lot of people that are learning Portuguese and they are speaking Portuguese with me. Sometimes they are saying something and then they oh and then they correct themselves because they thought that what they said was wrong. So they were speaking naturally, but then the conscious mind said, Oh, this is right. This is wrong. Did I say it right? Is this is this is the right, correct, is this the correct verb? And guess what? 100% of the times, I mean, I saw it, I was there. The first option was the correct. So their conscious mind correct, but the first sentence was the correct one. So when we internalize the information, and we naturally try to output it, probably it will be the correct answer. If you think too much, what is the verb? What is the word? Uh, this is the, the plural form of this uh, uh, word. This is the plural, this is the gender, um, feminine, masculine. And in the end, you can't speak because you are thinking too much. So when we internalize, and you try to use the language, probably the first idea that we you have is the correct one. Okay? So focus on really put information inside. For this, you really need to um, listen a lot, read a lot, uh, 
you need to uh, observe as much input as you can and not just any input, any content. You need to really absorb real life content, authentic content, like how people really speak uh, in real life, how natives use the language. So first, when you have two similar words, you learn one at first, you learn one, you use a lot of sentences, you read a lot, you listen a lot to uh, really authentic and real life content to internalize uh, the Portuguese language. Uh, you, uh, you fully understand. And when you really understand this and you feel comfortable, now you can move on to the next word that is similar to the other one. And by doing this, you don't you will find out that you don't really need to know the difference because your subconscious mind will automatically know when to use one word and when to use another word because you um, already listen a lot. This massive exposure will make you know, just like instinct, which word you should use, all right? And you can actually do this with verbs. For example, the verb tomar and the verb dar. These verbs are used in different ways, in different situations, and they can have different meanings. What you can do is, for example, the verb tomar. You learn that the verb tomar has one main meaning. And when you master this meaning, when you internalize this, you feel comfortable, you are ready to move on to another use of the verb tomar, and so on and so forth. And you just add these blocks. Instead of learning everything at once, you master each each like each part of this of the verb, and this way you'll not feel overwhelmed. And this is it for today. Thank you for watching and subscribe to receive the next European Portuguese videos. Ciao, ciao!